I don't think it set in that we are in the Stanley Cup final in this series until just moments before I went to record this episode. But it it feels real now. We are here. This is a Stanley Cup final series episode. We will play either the New York Rangers or the Buffalo Sabres, two teams that we have had series based upon in the past. The California Golden Seals are in the Stanley Cup final. That's insane to me. Obviously, the series over Winnipeg was ridiculous to beat them in five games. And then you look at the Nashville series from 3-0 up to almost being reverse swept, but not. We showed up in Game 7, and then we faced San Jose, and we beat them in 5. And again, now there's only one series left. We don't know who we're going to be playing just yet, but the fact that the fact that we're here is insane. It's the 2028-2029 season. We had a few chances prior to this season. And last year was the year where we lost in the second round where I'm like, man, that might have been our best chance. Yet here we are. And it's funny because in real life there have been teams like that where it's like, okay, they've they failed, they failed, and then they get to the point where you're just like, okay, they're never gonna win. And then finally happens but whether or not our story has a happy ending we don't yet know one last look at our team before we find out who we are playing in the cup final led by now 25 year old Dylan Red and the fact he's 25 he hasn't exactly had the best off season there are some players in that middle six that have been great and that have really been carrying the team. We need that goal-scoring touch that he is capable of to show up. He is a two, actually, excuse me, he's a three-time 30-goal scorer, once putting up 43 goals. We know what he's capable of. We need the best form of Dylan Redden possible. Howard Fragapani as well scores the winner. 12 points in 17 games is solid, but again, he is capable of of more. He's not the most prolific goal scorer. He's the backstrom of that line, but still, we need more out of the big three. Sergey Ivanov as well, the youngest on the line at 23. We know what they're capable of, but the big story for us, for us has been the middle six, even the bottom nine, you know, outside of the top line. Kim Nylander has been phenomenal. I don't think anyone would have expected 13 points for Nylander. Granted, a former first round pick but still tremendous postseason thus far Luke Baldwin eight points we know he's capable of more it's the same thing if we can get him firing on all cylinders he is a multi-time 20 goal scorer including a 31 goal season three years ago so we know what he can do and an Aiden Gray seven goals in this postseason run for the 24 year old it's only a second year in the league but he has really stepped up his game. On the third line, Sergei Nazarov was someone who got the call up just before the postseason started. He's been okay. Miroslav Hos has been pretty damn good. And Steve Krog has six goals off the back of a hat trick in the last round. And then you look at the fourth line, Arthur Kaliev, Roberto Booz has been pretty good. And Kurt Eddy, who managed to get his way back into the lineup. We know what they're capable of. The problem is, of course, they're also competing with a defense that's capable of putting up points. Josiah Niedermeyer has 12 this season. Six for Rokon, including a big-time goal. Four for Barry Fuller. Eight points for Zeeler. Nothing from the rookie Colin Richter, but still, he doesn't need to put up points. And then Nico Peelstrom there as well. And, of course, the main reason why we are here, and I don't think that's debatable, Brock Sestito. Now, not that long ago, Sestito... You know, we had our doubts, and that is why Brickwall Wilson became a thing in the 2025-2026 postseason. He had to bail us out when Sestito simply wasn't getting the job done. He ended up finishing with a pretty good save percentage, if I'm not mistaken. He did not. He was at a 900. But since then, in the playoffs, he has not been the reason as to why we have faltered, including last year. It's unbelievable that we lost in three overtimes and lost the series in five games. That said... 12-4-1, 12-4-1, two shutouts, and a 9-40 save percentage. He has been incredible. And if everybody on this team plays to their best potential, especially the bigger names, 
we have a chance to win the whole damn thing. The question is, will we be squaring off against the New York Rangers or the Buffalo Sabres? Let's find out. They should be playing Game 7 right here, May 23rd. Here we go. Who do you think? Rangers or Sabres? Let's find out. And it will be the Buffalo Sabres. And not, not only that, we have home ice advantage in this series. The Sabres win it. We will be taking on Buffalo in the Stanley Cup Final. I do want to take a quick look at this Rangers lineup. Granted, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, my God. Callie Lawson. Oh, my God. He's, he's a beast. One of the most prolific goal scorers in this series. Period. Ever since he's joined the league, he has his lowest goal total since he joined the league was 42. One of the most dominant offensive players and thank God we don't have to play him. Thank God. As far as the rest of the team, tough call. Of course, I didn't end up turning off uh, Fog of War. I'm going to go do that in a second. But that's the big thing. And Carter Hart was their goaltender. So that could have been a little bit problematic. You know what? I'm not going to turn off Fog of War. Yeah, I will. Screw it. Why not? Why not? Just make them... Hopefully don't make the mistake of forgetting to turn it back on. But... To be, uh, to be able to avoid Callio Lawson and to be able to avoid Carter Hart and the Rangers in general is probably quite good for my health because that would have been a very rough series champions tag for us or not. Let's actually go take one more look at the Rangers here just to get that finalized look. Yeah, Lawson's a beast. Jonathan Dolan's there. Dylan Cozens defensively. Auntie Kerman, Brady Shea. That is that is a tough team to beat. That said, the Buffalo Sabres did. So how good are they? Let's find out. And that is the squad. Huh. <laughs> okay, so we start off with 31-year-old Alex Nylander, who has 11 points in 16 games. That's pretty damn good. He's an 84, centered by Jack Eichel, who's over a point a game thanks to the assists and Sam Reinhardt. So a top three that you'd sort of expect with the Sabres, even at this point with all three members over the age of 30. The second line, we get Nikita Zhamnov, who was in the Fragapani draft. He went fourth. That was the pick after Fragapani, if I'm not mistaken. So very interesting there. He has 14 points in 16 games at an 85. Casey Middlestadt is the center on that line, and Brendan Gallagher at 37 years old. The third line is Arturi Lekkinen with Kimo Curry, 82 overall, former 8th overall pick of the Sabres, and Alexander Volkov, who was a real player drafted by Tampa. He's only a 78. The fourth line, you have Boone Jenner, Mohamed Niederreiter, or Nieder, no, Niedermeyer. That's that's just the wrong that's just the wrong way to go. Former 7th round pick of the Sabres, so good job on that front. And Shannon McCabe, also a 77. So, yeah. There's a very obvious elephant in the room here that we have the better lineup top to bottom. They have game changers like Eichel and Reinhardt. They have very strong options. Nylander, Jamnoff, Middlestock, Curry, Brendan Gallagher as well. But our lineup top to bottom is better. It's just whose big names will deliver down the stretch. Defensively, we have ourselves a problem because that's a very strong six. Rasmus Dahlin, 90 overall, now at 29 years old, on a pairing with Ryan Murray, who's still an 87 at 35 years old. Second pairing is Mikhail Sergachev with Shea Theodore. And the third pairing is Will Butcher with Marcus Nudivara. So defensively, they might have the slight edge. It's, it's tough to say. It's tough to say. Both defense cores are phenomenal. It comes down to the goaltending. And boy, is it going to come down to the goaltending. This is going to be a slugfest. Nicholas Jacobson, the 27-year-old, a 941, so slightly above that of Brock Sestito, but a 941, 90 overall, a former third-round pick of the Hurricanes. It's a battle of the Titans in goal, a battle of two tremendous defenses, and a battle of... <sighs> A battle against ourselves, because our forward core is better than theirs on paper. 
but on paper, doesn't mean a damn thing. Let's get down to it. The Stanley Cup Final begins Game 1 on home ice. We are here. We have arrived. Let's make the most of our first opportunity at the Stanley Cup. God, this is... Uh, <laughs> I'm nervous for this after looking at their lineup, man. Let's see what happens. First period, and we do get the opening goal. It's Andrew Zeeler. We had the slight edge in shots, 11-10. And we're up one to nothing thanks to the defenseman Zeeler. Let's see if we can build upon that here in the second period. Oof. Jamnoff and Lekin. 21 shots to 19. 2 to 1 on the board for the Sabres as we begin the third period. And Reinhardt makes it three unanswered. That's not good. That puts us into a very very rough spot we are halfway through the third and if we don't have a goal here quickly we have no chance at overtime power play opportunity goes to waste and that'll pretty much do it three unanswered goals one goal is all we could muster in game one pretty even in shots 30 to 27 advantage for the sabers but they take game one jacobson a first star performance and it wasn't the stars for either team offensively. I mean, Reinhardt did get the third goal, but that's that's very disappointing for us. The Sabres take game one. They take a game on the road to begin this series. And that puts a whole lot of pressure on our shoulders here for game two. Let's see what happens. No changes to the lineup yet. We're not exactly in panic mode, but if we lose this game... We might be somewhat close. First period of game two, and the Sabres make it four unanswered goals in total. It's Boone Jenner scored under two minutes into the period. Twelve shots to eight in our favor, but it simply didn't matter. Buffalo has the one to nothing lead. Second period, we get back into it. Two goals for Sergei Ivanov. The top line delivering. 22 shots to 18. We have the advantage, so... A bit of a role reversal, as in Game 1, we walked out of the first period with a 1-0 lead, and of course they bounced back to carry that 2-1 lead into the third period. We did the same thing this time out. Ivanov leading the way to the third period we go. Will it be the same story? Can we find that third goal, or will the Sabres tie this game up and really put the pressure on? We have a power play chance, and Steve Krogh makes it 3. We are 9 minutes away. From tying this series up before we head to Buffalo. And off the back of a strong performance from Ivanov, Krogh, and Sestito. We are in this series. Game 2 goes to the Seals. Ivanov the winning goal. Krogh the insurance. And again, a complete reversal of fortune. Same, same storyline. Just different teams walking away with the W. Sestito, only a second star performance with 26 saves. That's kind of surprising, but I'll take what we can get. So despite the fact that this series is tied, I would still give that slight advantage and momentum uh, to the Sabres at this point. They took a game on the road. You know what they say? You know what they say. You're not in trouble until you lose a game at home. Unfortunately, we have done that, but we'll have a chance to put the pressure on Buffalo here. As they host these next two games. We're not going to make any lineup changes. We're going to stick with it. Game three. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Game three of the Stanley Cup Final. <laughs> One game apiece thus far. Here we go. First period is scoreless. 14 shots to eight. So I would give us the slight edge for the fact that we haven't given up a goal yet, surprisingly. Second period, needless to say, we've given up goals now. <laughs> Shamnoff, Niedermeyer, and Middlestadt. 28 shots to 15, 3 to nothing on the board. And unless there is a comeback of all comebacks in the third period, the Sabres will regain their one game advantage in the series. Boone Jenner makes it four. Jesus. <sighs> Boone Jenner has two goals in this series thus far. Dylan Redden has zero. That's a problem. That is a very big problem as we might get shut out here. And indeed we will. 
The Sabres bounce back. 38 shots to 28. Four to nothing on the board. A shutout for Jacobson. And that is not a good sign by any stretch of the imagination. Just for the fact that that's now, I mean, you know, aside from game two, game one, one goal, game three, no goals. That's that's a problem. And I'm going to look at potentially changing things up here. I haven't turned off uh, Fog of War yet. I do have to remember to turn that back on. But in terms of what changes we could make, I'm honestly... I'm honestly not sure. Nazarov only has five points. Really what I'm not sure of is the fact that we are somewhat limited right now in the center depth that we have. In that, pretty much, I mean, Grant Crow can play center. Just in terms of who we'd want to call up and send down, I mean, nine points for Crow, eight points for Hosa, only five for Nazarov. Gray is doing all right. Baldwin only eight points. That top line needs to be split up. That's risky, but we need we need to do something. And I'm going to trust my gut on this decision. This might not be the way to go, but we need to spark something offensively. And we're going to do so by having an absolutely ridiculous center core. And if it proves to not work, then so be it. But I think that's how I want to try and spark a little bit of offense into our team right now just to get something going, anything going, because it simply hasn't been good enough thus far. So what I'm thinking here... What I'm thinking here is that we are going to go with something a little bit like that. Hosa, Fragapani, Nylander. I mean, Hosa has 8 points. Nylander with the 13. Kaliev, Red and Gray, Booz, Ivanov, Baldwin, Nazarov, Krogan, Eddie. It's a little bit of a risk, but to have a dominant, a potentially dominant center on each line... I almost feel bad about having Krogh on the fourth line. But we know he's capable of putting up points from a bottom six roll as opposed to a top end roll anyway. It's this or, again, we just try to base it off of overall or who's actually scoring goals. And unfortunately, it's not looking good on that front. I mean, I could drop Kaliev. Like, if we wanted to base it, Solely off of say goals too, because you know what? Screw it. We got time to uh, we got time to invest here. I mean, you look at some high end goal scorers. If we were to set it up in this way, let's see, five goals for uh, Redden. I mean, if we were to base it off of our top goal scorers, it's Crow, Ivanov, and Gray. Funny enough, which. Doesn't seem like that would be the case, but it is. To be honest, this isn't. This wouldn't be a terrible setup either. We'd still have a fairly well-rounded team. Hosa and Booz could be the ones playing center. Let's see, Kali have five points. Nazarov five points. I mean, granted, it is somewhat similar to what we've had. Whether or not this is the option worth going for we have to change up something just to spark a change in this team and i'm not sure what that spark is that third pairing struggling a little bit they've been the weak link thus far but i'm not against trying something like this could be worth it there's the different center options as well it comes down to, I mean, you can tell by Sestito's save percentage, it's not exactly him. I mean, granted, you know, a four-goal-against performance isn't ideal, but we need our players to be able to solve Jacobson, and whether or not they're going to be able to do that, we'll see. But we have this new-look lineup. Decided not to go with the maxed-out center depth. We'll reward players for scoring goals, I guess, and as well as overall being factored into it. Let's see what happens. Is there some sort of spark that's going to be created here? Because if we fall down three games to one, heading back to home, 
uh, heading back home, heading back to home ice, well, we're in a lot of trouble. So game four, first period, and Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe Sestito is the issue. Eichel and Jamnoff make it two. Fragapani gets on the board, but Volkov makes it three to one. Three goals and 11 shots. Each team with 11 shots that period, but we're in a rough spot. <sighs> Second period. We get back into it. Kaliev and Gray with the goals. It's three all. 24 shots to 22 in our favor. A brutal first period, but we, we tighten up defensively. We shut things down. The goals from Kaliev and Gray about 10 minutes apart, and we have a chance. We've proven that we can get the Jacobson. Can we do it again here in the third period? This is this is it. Power play chance for the Sabres is killed off. And Nylander gets us on the board. Jamnoff ties it just seconds later. 28 seconds later. Oh my god. Come on. We're halfway through the third period. The next goal is going to win this. No doubt in my mind. The next goal is going to win this. Under four minutes remaining. Are we destined for overtime? Power play chance goes to waste. And we are going to overtime in game four. <sighs> Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, damn it. I mean, I'm happy that we battled back into this, and that Kim Nylander goal was huge, but the fact that it wasn't the winner could come back to haunt us again. If we lose this game, we're down 3-1 to one in this series, and that's not exactly where we'd prefer to be at this point. I think that's an understatement. So let's see what we can do. Can we get back into it? Let's find out. Krogh takes the draw and loses it. Brian Murray for Sam Reinhardt. Cutting back, looking for space. Reinhardt still looking. Murray for Darlene. Eichel in front. Reinhardt's backhand goes wide. And the puck ends up in the back of our net. What just happened? What the hell just happened the Buffalo Sabres have a 3-1 to one series lead what just happened yeah nice nice camera angle yeah that's that's a really good way to let me know what the hell just happened get that snaggletooth bitch off the ice I need a replay was it an own goal by Krogh, or did it just... What the fuck? I... I need to see what the hell just happened. Are you fu... We're gonna lose the Stanley Cup. Is that a passing animation? Like, did he try to pass it to that defense? Like, what happened? Like, did Krogh's player try to pass that, or did it just explode off of his tape? From the look of what he's doing with his hands, I think that was a pass. Watch Krogh's hands. That little flick, to me, indicates he tried to pass it. He tried to no-look pass... To the defenseman and it banked right in off the skate of Sestito. EA, you're... Like, okay. Am I the only one who's ever watched the AI actually play? Am I the only one? Oh, it happens! What can happen to the Oilers in the 80s? Come on. Different set of circumstances here. That is ridiculous. If that's even what happened. From what I can tell, that's a that's an intentional pass backwards as Nylander tries to hit him, and it's essentially an own goal. That's ridiculous. In that instance, in that instance, an AI or any player in your life, you try to get it around the back or you fire it out in that direction with the back pressure. 
just why can we not program AI in 2018? Holy shit. I mean, I defend this game where I can, but I see it quite frequently because of how often we jump in to watch the gameplay in crucial moments of just how bad the AI is. And I don't understand how that happening can be deemed as an acceptable an acceptable thing. Like how could how could anyone say the AI is in an acceptable form right now? I don't think anybody does. And there's another example as to just how bad it is. And because of that play, we are down three games to one to the Buffalo Sabres in a situation where I kinda of fucking wish I just never jumped in to watch it to get that more cinematic and dramatic view of an overtime. I wish I just stayed on the main menu because if I did, we might not have lost. And if we did, at least I wouldn't have had to see it happen in that way. And now we are in severe danger of losing here, as shitty as that is. I'm not going to make any changes for game four or after game four. It's game five, back on home ice. Can we drag our way back into the series or... Is Jacobson going to shut us down and this cup run, potentially the only cup run that we will have in this series, is it going to be marred by terrible AI where, let's let's be honest, we're not going to be sitting here and be like, oh, look what Krog did. That's terrible fucking AI. No other way around it. And we might lose the cup because of it. One game at a time, though, I do suppose. First period of game five, we do get the opening goal. It's Howard Fragapani. Dylan Redden has still yet to score in this series. So that's great. But we are up one to nothing, 12 shots to 10. Second period is scoreless, which is great news for us. 26 shots to 18 in our favor. We are 20 minutes away, hopefully, from forcing a game six. Could be an overtime, could be an outright loss. Let's find out. Early power play chance for the Sabres. An extended power play. They can't capitalize. They have another power play chance. That goes to waste. We'll get a quick one that we can't do anything with either. Nine minutes to go. Can Sestito shut the door? Can we hold on? Four minutes left. Is there a game six on the horizon? Yes, there is. 35 shots to 31 one to nothing on the board. Howard Fragapani, the lone goal. A 31 save shutout for Brock Sestito. And we are not done yet. We are going back to Buffalo with a chance to force game seven. A much needed rebound performance. Now, I know Redden is still leading this team in points, I know he's getting assists. But the fact that he doesn't have a goal is infuriating to me. And looking here, we need to... I know this team's technically won a game and just won, but we need to put forward the best lines possible. That third pairing's been a bit of a weakness. Our top pairing might be too good to split up. Zeeler is more of a point getter. But I'm going to drop him down. We're going to go Fuller, Peelstrom, Richter, and Zeeler. Just to try and neutralize that weakness of that third pairing that's been struggling thus far. Our power play as well. I mean, Kaliev's still on the power play, for God's sakes, as is Baldwin. We're going to get Nylander. Uh, Krogan, and Gray. Well, actually, here. Let me sort out the top six. Or the team in general. So we have five points there. Six points for Kaliev. Nine points for Baldwin. Eight for Hosa, which is still uh, more than Kaliev at six. Nazarov still on five points, doesn't have any points in this series. And then, of course, Redden, Fragapani, Nylander on 14 points. Gray, Krogan, and Ivanov. Let's reunite this top line. I just don't know if I want to weaken our center depth that much. It's not going to be that bad, but it's still technically going to be weaker. So you got nine points there, ten points for Krog, eight points, six points. Okay. So if we go Nazarov, Booze, Eddie, 
probably Hosa at center. He's not the best center, but in fairness, Baldwin's a little bit better, and I'm not going to really give a damn about handedness. Who has the better shot? Kaliev does. So let's go Hosa, Baldwin, Kaliev, Nylander, Krogh, and Gray, Ivanov, Fragapani, Redden. Pretty much run with the best lines possible and just see what happens. The risk of breaking up that third pairing. So we'll go with Nylander, Krogh, and Gray on the power play. Just to make that change and reward guys who deserve it. You could argue that should have been done sooner. I wouldn't necessarily disagree. So let's go ahead and uh, make that change. Let's set up the team in that way. <sighs> Game six. Is this squad good enough to overcome this massive hurdle? Do we have what it takes? Do we have enough left in the tank to force a Game 7 back on home ice? Or does this series end here? Game 6, first period, is scoreless. 11 shots to 9 in our favor. Nothing on the board for either team, though. Second period, opening goal to Buffalo, Brendan Gallagher. 23 shots to 19, one to nothing on the board for the Sabres. We have 20 minutes to force game seven, or this series is over. The third period begins, early power play chance goes to waste. I should have checked the power play chances for the Buffalo Sabres last game. Power play chance here, and it's an extended one that they can't score on. Six minutes, five minutes left. Five minutes left. The season, the series, the cup. It's all on the line. Do we have what it takes to get back into this? Do we have what it takes to find the one goal to at the very least force overtime? Do we have what it takes to force game seven? Let's find out. Can we get the job done? Face-off win for the Sabres. Here's Sergachev, Shea Theodore across the blue line. Cross-ice pass to Jamnoff. Circles back, has trouble with it. Recovered by Peelstrom, quick out for Kurt Eddy. Eddy, looking, gets bumped off the puck, recovers, drops back, it's Booze. Peelstrom for Fuller, looking for a shot. Loose puck in front. Middle stat will carry it out for Buffalo. Here's Gallagher, the goal scorer. Brendan Gallagher. Loses it to Eddie. Now here's Nico Peelstrom. 4.20 to go. Memes. Booze. Quick shot and a glove save by Jacobson. 4.19 remaining. Dylan Redden. Not a single goal in this series. On top of EA nonsense, that is perhaps the biggest story of this entire series as Fragapani wins the draw. Rokon for Redden loses it. Jacobson will cover the loose puck. 4-14. Steve Krogh, second in hit, so we have a very physical team, as you can tell. Ivanov, Fragapani, and Redden are out there. Fragapani takes the draw against Eichel. And it'll be a win for Buffalo. Murray for Alex Nylander. Nylander sends it around. Reinhardt's there, back in front, and a gigantic save on Jack Eichel to keep the team alive. Sestito bails us out. Under four minutes to go here. Here's Dylan Redden. Redden drops back. Rokon has trouble. Back over. Shot to flex, and it's a kick save. From Jacobson. Big saves on both sides here. Aggressive play from Niedermeyer. He wins the puck back. Josiah Niedermeyer. Looking. In front. Puck goes all the way through. Here's Ivanov. Battling. Still battling with Murray. And he slashed him. The Sabres are going on the power play. Gallagher shot. Stopped by Sestito. Gallagher. Another chance. Another save. Jamnoff denied. As the Sabres will go 
to the power play with 3.18 to go. Sergey Ivanov. <sighs> Absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Osa and Krogh are out against Jamnoff, Middlestadt, and Curry. The Sabres 0 for 4 on the power play. Niedermeyer finds Hosa. We'll send it around. Krogh gives chase against Sergachev, who's able to retain possession. Finds Will Butcher. Sabres enter the zone. Will Butcher, quick pass. Jamnoff, it gets poked away by Sestito. Here's Butcher for Curry. One-timer stopped in front. Niedermeyer has it. Unable to clear. Big chance for the Sabres. Quick pass in front. Another save by Sestito. As the team in front of him honestly doesn't look up to the challenge. 2.49 to go. They're on the kill for the next minute and a half. As the cup is being prepared. We have a very good track record in Stanley Cups. We've gotten extremely lucky. Whether it be last season miracles, first season triumphs. First season triumphs, but will, will there be one here? Middle stop for Theodore. Back again, Sabres working it around. Shea Theodore steps in, it gets broken up by Fragapani. He finds Kim Nylander who will send it in. 2.35 remaining. Rasmus Dahlin. He's able to find Jamnoff. Gets broken up by Nico Pielstrom. Pielstrom has trouble before he's able to clear. One minute remaining on the Buffalo power play. Theodore. We're battling here. Nylander not able to win it back. Here's Jamnoff for the Sabres. Jamnoff drops back. Shea Theodore loses it. Nylander's able to get it. Loose puck in front. The Sabres recover. Eichel for Dahlin. Now Jamnoff. In front, another save by Sestito. Curry back up to the point as Dahlin back down low again. Here's Curry. Eichel takes a big hit. Nylander recovers it. He finds Pilstrom. 30 seconds to go on the Buffalo power play. Nico Pilstrom tries to drop for Fragapani and does. Here's Pilstrom. He can't get the shot off. Jamnoff's able to find it. Here's Curry. Now Theodore. Dahlin finds Jack Eichel. Eichel steps in, shot, and a shoulder save from Sestito. 1.30 remaining in regulation. Here's Howard Fragapani. Finds Nico Pilstrom. Pilstrom over the line. Drops back. Fragapani to Rokon. Back again. And Reinhardt's there to break it up. Still loose. Dahlin gets it. Even strength. 1.15 to go in regulation. Dahlin for Eichel. Back to the point of Theodore. Quick DDD passes. Dahlin denied by the glove of Sestito. 1-0-5 remaining. <sighs> Brock Sestito is doing everything he can to keep his team in it. As my dog is doing everything she can to be as noisy as possible or rustling around with a blanket. Hosa, Baldwin, and Kali ever out against Lekin and Curry and Volkov. Can Baldwin win the draw? Yes, he can. Here's Hosa. One minute remaining. Kaliev, one of the original picks, steps in, tries to find a man, and a big glove save from Jacobson. Baldwin denied. 56.2 remaining. Hosa, Baldwin, Kaliev. It's still third line v. third line. Do we have what it takes? Baldwin. Loses the draw clean to Curry. Sergachev for Lekkinen. Finds Curry again. Here's Volkov. He'll send it around. 45 to go. Zeeler turns it over. A bump in the back. Stops Volkov from getting the shot off. Baldwin finds it. Here's Kaliev. 37 remaining. As Sestito heads to the bench. Hosa for Zeeler. Nearly turns it over. Hosa the chance and a big save. Hosa recovers. Still battling. Sergachev, Lekkinen, now McCabe, he'll dump it in, 20 seconds remaining, Richter turns it over, Lekkinen the one T for McCabe, and that'll do it, Brock Sestito did everything he could, he did everything he could to keep us in it, 
And the Buffalo Sabres are going to win the Stanley Cup. From so many different angles you can look at this. And regardless, it's disappointing. Sestito might not have had... He might have had some weak games. You can't blame him for the majority of the series. I said it came down to whether or not our big players performed. And our biggest player, Dylan Redden, let us down. Does that shot to flex out 3.6 away? The Sabres will win the cup. And that leaves us with a lot of questions moving forward. <sighs> Jacobson covers with point seven and ZA just rubs it in. So many different ways to look at this from who underperformed and then you think of whether or not we're going to get back to this point the Buffalo Sabres win the cup on home ice in six games off the back of a spectacular goaltender and a very solid defense core it was enough the bottom line is you had players like Dylan Redden be outperformed by a veteran Boone Jenner and that was the difference the goaltenders the defense head-to-head -head, they 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 really you know equaled out so to speak for lack of a better term it was just down to whether or not our offense which was better on paper could get the job done and unfortunately they couldn't and whether or not we ever make it back to this point, I don't know. That may have been our one and only opportunity. We've seen it before in other Draft of Glory series. When you get to the middle and the end of a series, that desperation to try and get back, just sometimes it doesn't happen. And of course, the questions of what if this player, what if that player is Jacobson? Nicholas Jacobson with his 942 save percentage gets the con Smythe, rightfully so. Buffalo Sabres will raise the Stanley Cup as it is the most disappointing ending I think we could have had. Again, we can look at it from who underperformed to some EA nonsense in a prior game. Regardless, here we are. We were one goal away from maybe tying this up. And now, instead, we get to witness Jack Eichel raise the Stanley Cup. <sighs> EA, I think you need to fix your audio for the record because this crowd is deadly silent for a team raising the cup on home ice. That's a bit of an issue. As Eichel hands the cup off, I don't know who that is. It's a real player, though, is it not? Yeah, it's Ryan Murray. That makes sense. I was going to say his face is too non-EA-like. Seriously, look at, listen to the audio. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't want this being a video just being like, EA, you're stupid, but Jesus, what's, like, come on. It's a team raising the cup on home ice. The crowd's dead silent. You can at least, I mean, shit, play some sort of, like, Ovechkin style. If you don't want to pay for We Are the Champions, do some sappy music in the background. Make it feel like a moment. Instead, this crowd is like, yay, and there's no sounds. <laughs> Which, in fairness, this team's about as dead as I am inside right now after watching my team lose. <laughs> as Jacobson will be handed the cup. He deserves it. I don't know what happens next in this series. I truly don't. I don't know what happens next. So many unanswered questions that only time can tell as far as what will happen moving forward. But to lose... To lose in that way is something that will haunt us for a long time. Especially if we never get back. We lose our first... Our first, uh, we lose our first chance to win the cup. The Buffalo Sabres are Stanley Cup champions. And again, 
whether it be EA nonsense, whatever you choose to look at, the big factor for me is right there on screen right now. Dylan Redden did not score a single goal in that series, and that's unacceptable. If you want to point fingers, I mean, we'll look at final stats. The good thing is we don't have to look at Buffalo's team. But if you want to point fingers, I mean, Sestito was still solid. The save percentage dropped, but he was still solid. Under a 2.0 GAA, the team should have been able to do well enough to get the win, and they couldn't. Defensively, Peelstrom and Richter really struggled in the final. And unfortunately, we didn't get much of a, a point total from someone like Niedermeyer. I mean, Niedermeyer was solid. I mean, that's that's about average for our defense. Just Pilstrom and Richter really struggled. And then forward-wise, that's just not good enough. Period. That's just not good enough. For yeah, I mean, you look at that Sabres offense and what they're capable of, I suppose. But Dylan Redden had two more goals than Boone Jenner in the postseason. I I just I can't get over that. I mean, our top three delivered, but they needed to do more. Period. They needed to do more. And then guys like Kaliev, Roberto Booz, Nazarov, Eddie, they just didn't really do much down the stretch. <sighs> so like I said, you can point fingers where you want. The outcome is the same regardless. And it's so disappointing. As the Eastern Conference gets back-to-back Stanley Cups. The LA Kings were President's Trophy winners. Connor McDavid wins the Art Ross for the second straight year. And he also wins the Hart. The Norris went to Engel in San Jose for the second time in three years. Lady Bing to Shifley for the second straight year. Fritch in Washington wins the Calder. Con Smythe goes to Jacobson, as we knew. The Vesna to Haley in San Jose. So again, just the fact that we were able to outlast San Jose in five and that's what happens. Ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Sestito takes home the Jennings. Masterton the Ford. The Selkie the Vinehandle. McDavid the Ten Lindsay. And Vinehandle the Rocket Richard. Down in the AHL, Ronick put up the most points in the league, which is pretty solid. He was also league MVP. So that's who we took, of course. Uh, over Eli Maroon. Letta Viore was the goal scoring king. So we'll just scroll through here. Yeah, Ronick takes home a couple of awards. We'll see if he can break through next year I don't know what happens next it's a wait and see kind of thing we'll see how the draft goes in terms of contracts that we have to deal with Krogh, Booz, Beret, Hosa, Eddie and we got we got some to worry about unfortunately if we look at all expiring a couple of minor guys as well and then defensively Nobody too major outside of Brock Sestito, where it took us a whole lot of money just to get him back, and unfortunately, he's still not wanting to stay, so negotiations might be tough. We'll see what happens, not to mention this might have been the last season for Pedro Wilson, as the goaltending situation continues to be half decent, really, it's the only way to look at it. But guys, that'll do it for this one. Uh, For those who say, and it's funny, I've seen people be like, you know, every time you get to the cup, you win. Not every time, guys. Not every time. Thank you for watching. Support the video. Support the channel. Check out everything in the description and click the bell to make sure you don't miss out. I will see you guys in the next one.